Time now for Focus, the naked truth about airport scanners tonight. Following in the footsteps of the U.S., the U.K., the Netherlands, Canada, Australia, just to name a few, France has become the latest to introduce full-body scanners at its main airport. An experimental scanner was used for the first time Monday to check passengers flying to the U.S. from Charles de Gaulle Airport here in Paris. France voluntarily introduced the new safety scanners following a U.S. request for greater precautions to be taken at foreign airports in the wake of the attempted bombing of a Christmas Day flight from Amsterdam to Detroit. Now, the new safety scanners have been installed in about a dozen airports around the world, but not without controversy. Privacy campaigners say the scanners produce naked images of passengers, which represents an unnecessary violation. Well, in a moment, we'll be speaking to crisis management expert Michelle Nesterenko. But first, Catherine Stapley takes a look at how these new scanners are being received here in France. A necessary security measure or a violation of human rights? At Charles de Gaulle Airport, U.S.-bound passengers are testing the first body scanner to be used in France. The scanner is able to see through clothing, revealing everything, including breast enlargements and piercings. Supporters of the body scanner say it ensures that passengers are not carrying dangerous objects on board. If the operator finds something suspect, he indicates it on this silhouette, which appears on this screen. Here you see the silhouette shows that there's something on the hip and something near the belt. But privacy campaigners say the images are so graphic they amount to virtual strip searching and have called for safeguards to protect the privacy of passengers. I would call this the voyeuristic scanner. It strips you naked. It goes beyond violating privacy. It deals with something very intimate and personal. It affects your dignity. The high-tech security measure will be used at Charles de Gaulle Airport for a trial period of three months. It's already been introduced in some other countries, including a number of airports in the United States. In Europe, Italy, the Netherlands and the UK brought in scanners at some airports for passengers on US-bound flights following the attempted bombing of a US airliner on Christmas Day. In Britain, concerns were raised that the scanners threatened to breach child protection laws, which ban the creation of indecent images of children. In Paris, airport passengers' reactions to the body scanner were mixed. Well, I like it. It's safer. And it's easy. It depends. If everyone can see the picture of me, I'd rather the physical search. I think it's a bit intrusive. I prefer the classic method. The French National Committee for Civil Liberties has set up a few rules to reassure passengers. Face and intimate body parts can be blurred. Security agents controlling the scan should not interact with the passengers and images should only be stored for a limited amount of time. At the moment, going through the body scanner is voluntary. French aviation authorities say passengers will be able to refuse a body scan and be searched instead. Well, joining us for tonight's Focus on France and Cannes is Michel Nesterenko, who is president of the crisis management firm Protection Total Engineering. Thank you so much for being on the program Good tonight. Evening. Uh, first off, how exactly do these scanners work and what do we see exactly? Well, they're supposed to be a lot better than the X-rays that uh, we have had for the at the airports for a long time now, and uh, if they are not uh, turned down a little, like they like the picture showed, uh, you can see uh, all the details, uh, bodily details, including uh, pubic hair and so on. Oh, you can see all that stuff. Then. You could. Yes, you so, could see so do you it. understand then that some people might be offended and might be shocked about this being introduced at airports? Absolutely, right. number one. And number two, uh, people who have had operations and might have some uh, uh, types of equipments inside their body. Like implants and stuff. Implants, exactly. Uh, the scanner might not be able to differentiate the, what is a medical implant from a bomb or an, a weapon. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what are you saying then? Is this entirely foolproof then? Are, are people going to be able to, to, uh, to better secure the airports? I mean, w how is this, this going to work, I mean, in the end? In, in security, there is no foolproof system. That's, uh, that's uh, a rule that we've known for a very long time. And the security is only as good as the weakest link in the chain. And if you secure 
uh, one airport and not the others mm. worldwide, the terrorists are going to come in through the weaker links. Do, do you think uh, that a body scanner could have prevented the Nigerian man, Abdul Mutalab, from boarding that plane uh, to Detroit on Christmas Day? Well, if, if it was the first try, maybe. But what we know today is that terrorists will test the system and within six months of installation will know how to get around it. I mean, this has been done for all the technology we have put in up to now. It's going to be true for this also. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, there are obviously some uh, uh, privacy concerns over these full-body scanners. And now that you mention that we see almost everything, I, I must say I'm also concerned about this. But what about the health issues? What about the level of radiation of these uh, scanners? Well, on a short-term basis, uh, I don't think there is any major issue because it's been tested. The long-term uh, results, the long-term uh, uh, impact is not tested. Mm -hmm. uh, we know today that we should limit the number of x-rays we get from the doctors. Uh, this is much more powerful than the doctor's x-ray. So what will it do to the human body in the long term, depending on how often you travel? This is an issue which hasn't been really investigated. So a large scale then has to be uh, determined as far as the long term effects is concerned. Now, in the short term, this of course is to deal with security at airports. Do you think this is going to speed up security at airports or are we going to see longer lines? Because if everyone has to go through these scanners, I imagine that the lines will be getting a bit longer then. Well, here again, we're talking about the weakest link. If uh, only 10 person in an airplane don't go through the scanner, the plane is going to have to wait. So everybody is going to have to wait for the full two hours regardless of whether some people go through faster than others. Now, if you get stopped at the scanner because you have some implant in your body, uh, you're going to delay the airplane mm -hmm. because your bags are already loaded. Right. So we have an airport logistics problem, which is just as big as what it is today. So uh, then this is not going to make the lines any shorter then? Some people are not going to wait as long as they do today. And, and how does it work, really? I mean, is it, is it on, a, on a case, you know, when I get to the airport, is it on a case on a voluntary basis or, you know, are, are some people singled out to go through these scanners? Well, today it's voluntary. Okay, that's what I Yes, understood. you can bet that within a few months or a year, it's not going to be voluntary. And if you don't go through the scanner, then you're going to spend a lot of time being patted down. I, I mean, I'm, if it's voluntary today, I have a hard time believing that a would-be terrorist would, you know, would voluntarily go through these scanners. I mean, it's, then what's the point then, is the, my question. The point is to test the system. Right. To find out what the system detects and does not detect. So the day you want to really attack an airplane, you will do it successfully. Okay. Now, is there a risk that these scanners might be misused? I mean, who gets to see these images? Well, this is the whole point. Uh, in Europe, we have uh, very strong protections. In the United States, this is not the case. In the United States, the pictures are going to be kept for 50 years, maybe more, in uh, government databases, which we know today are being pirated. So your image might end up in the hands of mafias or whatever. They Nobody could end knows. up on the Internet. Could end up on the Internet, yes. All right. Now, do these, uh, do these scanners violate European privacy laws? Well, if they are being put in the airport, uh, they've been, the laws have been checked, so presumably no. But I can see that a lot of people might get very uh, uncomfortable, yeah. uh, especially not knowing where the image is going to end up. Uh, do you think the French uh, National Assembly is likely to approve these scanners? Because right now they're only being tested at Paris's Champs de Gaulle Airport, and they have to be approved by the government. I think we have no choice. The American government has decided that this is a system you're going to put in, and everybody is go worldwide is going to do it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Michel Nesterenko, president of the Crisis Management Firm Protection Total Engineering, speaking to us on Focus tonight about the full-body scanners which are slowly being introduced at airports around the world. That's the Focus. More news coming up very shortly on France 24. Stay with us.